So the vast majority of the public can recognize a monarch butterfly, at least in its adult butterfly form. And these monarchs are completely reliant on this group of plants called milkweeds. There are three species of milkweed that are most commonly planted and most widely available in this area at nurseries or through seeds, and that's common milkweed, butterfly milkweed, and swamp milkweed. And we are running these experiments where we are observing monarch survival in people's gardens on each one of these milkweed species. We realized that there was this sort of untapped community that we could uh, use and learn from their knowledge they've gained over generations, truly. So in State College, we have this really prominent homestead group that has a very active conversation that's ongoing about ways in which you can facilitate insects that you want to keep in your yard and get rid of ones that you don't want to keep in your yard. This garden setting is the real world. This is how these plants and insects are interacting in the real world. And that is utterly irreplaceable. We found 10 beautiful sites that myself and the people that I work with visit every week over this summer to observe monarchs, but also to observe and record the insect community as a whole on these milkweed plants. Yeah, when we moved here there were a few milkweed plants and the first couple summers we saw a couple caterpillars on them but not many and it wasn't until we started adding nectar plants that we started seeing a lot of monarchs, adult monarchs, actually coming to our yard and we added more and more milkweed and then we started seeing tons of caterpillars. Monarchs are probably a good uh, gateway insect for a lot of people and so hopefully once they start seeing other insects in their yard they'll be interested in identifying them and learning about what other plants they can plant to attract more of them or other kinds of insects. We really like planting native plants that remind us of places that we've been in the area, different hikes. We have over 24 different species of uh, native flowering plants here. We're excited to help um, with scientific knowledge. So we can make all the recommendations we want as scientists, but until it's put into practice, we don't know the real effect. And so these people are the people that are showing us whether or not this works. And so the major goal is because there's this recommendation right now to plant as much milkweed as possible, but there's no real idea of which species of milkweed, because there's multiple, is the best for these organisms. What we want to do is say, you know, if you plant one of the three species that's majorly grown for monarchs, you can support them this much more. If you ask any gardener or look at any milkweed garden, you'll see tall milkweed plants with big broad leaves and you might see small milkweed plants that have tiny little leaves and lots of hairs. Some have sticky latex, some have toxic chemicals in them. It's a highly diverse group of plants. So what we're finding is depending on the plant species of milkweed that the butterfly fed on, from migrating to, to surviving the summer, the plant you pick can have a major impact on these butterflies. With all the diversity of choices we have, if you go into your common seed catalog, you can see numerous species available to you. One thing that we're hoping our research can start passing along is information about what secures the highest survivorship of the monarchs. And we can give this information to people that hope to grow them, people that are, are wanting to put them on roadsides, so that we would know we're picking the best plant that best serves the monarch and also the habitat surrounding it. When we look at the monarch literature and everything that we know about this awesome charismatic organism, we know very little about what eats them. And it could be a huge bottleneck for their populations in succeeding through their migration and their summer breeding, which could contribute obviously to the numbers that we're seeing at the overwintering sites. And that's what's alarming to folks when we're thinking about their decline. We have the opportunity through monarchs to teach about species interactions, to teach about conservation in general, and to teach about ways that you can really, as an individual, facilitate that. 
And something fascinating that I've found over the last few months of doing this research is that there's such a big community of insects on these plants. Every time we go out to the community gardens, we're seeing new insects that I had never seen before, I didn't know existed, um, because I'm really new to entomology, and it's really exciting to know that there are so many different insects. There's such a diversity of organisms relying on milkweed, and that this work can kind of be helping all of them, not just monarchs. We have a lot more bumblebees and other native pollinators. And uh, we really like the milkweed bugs and milkweed beetles because they're very colorful. They really add to the garden experience. We are not only supporting just monarch butterflies, their caterpillars and their migration. We're also supporting a complex of herbivores and natural enemies that also use those plants in addition to vertebrates and other organisms that feed on all of those insects, on milkweeds. And now wherever I go, I just am so excited to look around me and see such a diversity of insects that I never would have thought to look for before experiencing this for the first time through milkweed and monarchs in that system.